Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Ask FPT, of course, the weekly community show where you, the community, ask questions and I do the answering of the questions. It is four in the morning right now as I'm recording this. Oh man, let's just hope for the best. So real quick, just to give you a heads up, I mentioned last week something about Creator Mindset, my new podcast, specifically directed towards creators here in the community or just creators in general. The purpose of the podcast is to go beyond the YouTube strategy that you're so used to hearing and instead shifting your mindset as a creator, giving you tough love, tough answers to your questions that you need to hear. It's available right now if you want it. Uh, it's available on Spotify, iTunes, or Apple Podcasts, whatever they're calling it, and Google Play or Google Podcasts, whatever they're calling it. The links are down below. Go subscribe. First episode is going to drop this weekend. All right, question numero uno. Number one comes from Kojo A. They ask, have you ever met a fan in public? Yes, of course, I've met a fan in public. I've met a lot of fans in public, actually. And honestly, it's one of the most gratifying experiences ever in the history of everness. I mean, we post a show for everybody, right? Thousands of people see, we get a bunch of comments, and we're interacting with a ton of people every day. But behind every username is a face, is a real-life person, and being able to put faces to the usernames is the coolest thing ever. So if you ever see me in public, don't be afraid to say hey. Unless I'm at McDonald's. That's like, that's my time. That's my thing. That's my happy place. Next question from Hi Apple. Uh, what do you think would happen to Apple if Samsung cut Apple off from the displays? They would be fucked. The issue is not that Samsung just makes really great displays and no one else could replicate them. Okay, that, that's part of the reason. Samsung does make really good displays, but part of the issue with going with anybody else is no one could actually pump out the, the amount of displays necessary to meet Apple's needs, to meet Apple's requirements for how many devices they ship. They, they ship an insane number of products, and really, only Samsung has the resources and capacity to keep up with that sort of thing. Next one from Devin Miller. Why do you want to get the iPhone 9 despite it having a notch? Uh, fun fact, Devin. I don't have a fucking choice. From a hardware standpoint, right, the notch itself is a design oversight. I hate the notch, but what choice do I have, dude? I mean, there is no Android OEM that is thinking for themselves. They are incapable of thinking for themselves. They all just follow the herd. They all do what Apple does. And for that alone, disappointment is not even a strong enough word to describe how I feel about the Android community as a whole right now. Android OEMs, figure your shit out. You don't need to be Apple. I mean, yes, I could go with Samsung. I could depend on Samsung. They're the only ones. They're the last outlaw, not including the notch. But like, I have a Samsung, and it, this is here's the truth. Okay, here's your. This is this is the way it works. This is not a hardware game anymore. Okay, kids, it's not 2009. This is a software game, and right now, in terms of software, Google's dragging their feet, and Apple's kicking some ass with iOS. From Laurent D. Backer, I think I, I didn't I didn't say that right. John, you trained in Aikido? What belt were you, if I may ask? I did Aikido too, and had a yellow belt, then I became sick, leukemia, so I couldn't practice anymore. Yeah, I trained for years in Aikido. By the end of it, I was a secondary black belt, and that's not like me bragging, because I, I don't do it anymore, so if I got in a fight, chances are my instincts are a little flawed and i would get my dick kicked in the dirt oh but sorry about the whole leukemia thing just i'm sure you're kicking ass regardless from ed hannon he asks if you had to go back in time with one piece of tech with the intent to blow people's minds what would it be dude one of these for sure a smartphone are you kidding me if i took this thing back in time and handed it to someone was like yeah these uh, sheets of glass you just touch it and it talks to space and space shoots down stuff and you you can learn anything you want. You, all the all the information you could ever dream of is here. You want to learn how to start a fire? Yep, it's there. Also, you can talk to anybody on the world in the world with this thing. You just the space the space waves do it. This I take I take a smartphone from Aiden. What's the most annoying thing about being a YouTuber slash tech newser? So I'll just a tech YouTuber tech creator in general. Uh, this one hits close to home. So the best part about tech is the community. But the worst part about tech, the community. You have so many people where their entire identities is wrapped up on these shitty, shitty things, right? You, their whole identity is in this Samsung Galaxy phone or in the latest iPhone. That's what they live and breathe for, and they don't care what you have to say. That's the that's the funniest part about being a tech YouTuber. People search for content online and stuff, and they click on your video, but... The real secret behind all this stuff is they don't care. They didn't click on the video because they genuinely want your opinion. At least, I know there's some people out there in the audience that are like that, and I really appreciate you, but 80% of the people, 
don't care about your opinion. They have their own opinion and they click on your video hoping that you just validate theirs. They don't actually give a shit about what you think. All they need you to do is make them feel okay about a purchase they've made or that they're going to make. They don't actually care about you. That's the worst part. I'm not here to validate anyone's opinion. If you think that's the case, you can f off. Here, I'll give you an example. The other day, in Front Page Tech, we talked about the new MacBooks, the 2018 MacBook updates, literally just a couple days ago. In the episode, in that very episode, I praised Apple. I said the MacBooks are amazing and impressive. But I also mentioned that there might be keyboard issues because of past issues Apple has had. And the comments are just calling me an Apple hater. Like, oh, I'm, maybe I'm not telling the truth. Maybe I just hate Apple. And that's why I was, that's why I would possibly say anything negative about sweet Apple. Literally, I woke up yesterday and the first comment I saw was that my whole family should die. Because I said there might be some dust that could get in the keyboard. That's the worst part about being a tech YouTuber. From Quack Television, do you use Apple Music or Spotify? Uh, yeah, Spotify, Pfft, for sure. Basically, purely for Discover Weekly. That's one of the best features on any platform ever and any service I've ever paid for. Discover Weekly is amazing. Just uh, here, here's a bunch of new stuff that you probably haven't heard that we think you'll like, and it's always spot on. Uh, except that one time where I had a whole week or two of just everything in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, in case that wasn't clear. From David Eckerd, question, uh, he's referring to Recycle Bin from last week. Why do you have the Golden Girls theme song memorized? I did, I do have, you don't? Don't fucking judge me. From Chicken Fat, what podcast do you listen to? That's actually my favorite form of content, long form content. Like, yes, we make shorter form content and I do love YouTube and I watch a lot of YouTube, but my favorite form is long form content. I love podcasts, but I actually don't listen to a lot of tech podcasts. I don't watch a lot of tech content, period, just because it, this is what I do all day. So when I'm not doing this, I want to do anything else. Uh, and usually I just it's political stuff. I love political podcasts, political shows, but I can't like tell you which podcasts because I don't need anything else for anyone to hate me for. From Links4, why don't you collab with Unbox Therapy? Uh, because he hasn't asked me, and because I don't care. From T Watcher, do you have a job? No offense, but you seem to make a lot of videos, and so I was wondering. By the way, I love your videos. Uh, thanks, T Watcher. Uh, glad you love the videos. And no offense taken, but yes, this is the job. This what you, the whole you, we put out a lot of videos. Because this is our job, full-time job. From Lewis R, uh, why is the entry-level iPhone, the LCD model, still expensive? I mean, $750 is not cheap. That's the thing. Who who said it was going to be cheap? We're getting rumblings of the price range being around $700, but the mistakes are happening in all the headlines everywhere. They're calling this a budget iPhone, and that's, that's the mistake. You're setting expectations totally wrong here. This is just another iPhone in a really good price point. Is it more accessible for a lot of people? Probably, but it's not a budget phone. Don't... The word budget and Apple don't go together. Don't start now. And that's the show. Hopefully you liked it. You learned something. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them next week. Make sure though, if you do have a question and you ask it down below, use the hashtag AskFPT. That way it can better differentiate between actual questions and normal comments. And that's it. I guess I'll see you uh, sometime. I don't know how to close these yet. I haven't found a way out. Um, so... Brian and it.